We would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the Wajak people. The whole community was surprised in July 2016 when this wetland was bulldozed. It was the last thing anyone expected. Seeing the, the bit that hadn't been destroyed next to the bit that was, was really a shocking kind of comparison. We've collected over 4,000 signatures from people opposed to the subdivision. I knew it was there, but I had no idea who owned it and never ever considered it would go anywhere. We are opposed to the destruction of this wetland. So when I heard that it was being bulldozed, I was horrified. Anything we can do to stop it, it will be very good. My name is Rachel Roberts. I'm a member of No Houses in Wetlands, a community group formed after the bulldozing of this wetland in July 2016. This is a privately owned wetland full of paper barks, birds, frogs, turtles, reptiles and the life that supports them. There's at least seven species of frogs. A couple of those species aren't seen very often and there is quite a healthy oblong turtle population and it looks like they're going to go on the threatened list soon too because their numbers are in severe decline. BirdLife Australia have had formal surveys since 1975 and these counts so far rests at about 105 of species that actually have been recorded. These wetlands should be conserved because there won't be much refuge left for these animals if we keep them bulldozing. With less than 10% of wetlands remaining on the Swan Coastal Plain, we believe it's time for our state government to place a priority on wetland conservation. We would assume that the government would have environmental protections in place, that they would be doing the right thing. But here, in our Carter's wetland approval, was based against the advice of the City of Bayswater the Department of Parks and Wildlife, and there were numerous omissions and incorrect information on which that decision was based. There is no right of appeal. The only person that can appeal that decision is the developer. Our group has stopped the bulldozers for the moment and shone a torch on the planning processes that allowed a subdivision to be approved in this space without a single site visit by any government agency and with no environmental assessment of the wetlands involved. But we haven't been still. In October 2016, both wetlands were reclassified to a higher conservation level, the level they should have been classified at all the time, confirming what the community has been saying all along. These wetlands have life in them worth saving. I want the Carter's wetland, as does the council, to come under council ownership and we'll own it forever and keep the wetlands. We started it rolling by saying we'll commit $1.5 million towards the purchase of the Carter's piece of land. So that's council's commitment. Our local member, Lisa Baker, has just announced that if elected on March 11, our Labor government will assist the city of Bayswater to buy this wetland. It is money that is there. It is just money that they are too lousy to put into our wetland. And I look forward to giving you a check for $1.5 million and see if we can negotiate the outcome that we all know is the only sensible outcome. Put it this way, we've reached a critical tipping point in terms of the wildlife along the river. It may look like a small interference, but it could have an exponentially much bigger effect.